Hi everyone. Um, we had a lot of success with our first video, our trip into the bog. So we went on another adventure and uh, we want to take you along. Uh, yesterday we went out to look for leaf mining caterpillars that overwintered inside leaves. Uh, we found a species that mines in pitch pine, a caterpillar that mines in sedges, and one uh, that's actually not a caterpillar, a sawfly larva that mines in dewberry leaves. Uh, we're excited to take you out there again. I hope uh, this is helping some of you feel uh, like spring is on the way and we'll see you out in the field. So right now out of the cars, we're just sort of looking around for whatever we can find. Sloan's found a couple of um, sawfly cocoons on the branches. Courtney's been looking a lot at dead rotting wood, found a couple of spiders. And Sarah's charging into the brush over there, so we don't know what she's going to find. Pitch pine will have uh, needles coming from very short branches right out of the trunk. Helps them start to regrow quickly after a fire. Uh, this tree is very closely linked to fire burned habitats. So this is the tree that should have our first leaf miners. Uh... Oh, you've got some leaf miners? Here's another pitch pine on the edge here of our pine area. So where are the leaf miners? Oop! Sorry, I got distracted. Um. Beetle just flew at my face here. Uh, oh, those are great. Yeah, look at this one is pretty complete. Hold on, folks. There we go. Yeah, they overwinter. The just bulbs. those brown tips here are hiding caterpillars inside of them. Look at this little guy. Oh, oh it's one. out. Yeah. It's oh. actually out of of its house. Let's see. I want to try and get that. Hold on, Sarah. This Do you is want me to there. It is. You got it. Yeah, so what's it doing? Because I see it's home up there. Yeah. So it's going for a day out. Um, I've heard that these will move from one needle to another, but I didn't uh, ever think we would just see one on a needle like that. So we're out here and I'm acting like I know all about these uh, pitch pine needle miners, um, but really I was just told about them maybe a month ago uh, by Charlie Eisman. He's a specialist on leaf miners and it's already just changed my perspective. I always thought these pines just had a lot of dead edges, that they were sunburnt, maybe not in prime habitat. And in fact, every single one of these little brown ends has a caterpillar inside. So it's representing really not necessarily a problem, but an ecosystem at work here. Pines, the caterpillars that are mining the leaves, the things that are eating them. Um, so for me, learning about a new creature like this really just changes how I see the world and I'm, I'm glad for it. We're looking for leaf mines today, but we got a little distracted. Um, we saw these swollen stems on black locust. These are actually galls caused by um, wood boring caterpillars. Uh, we've opened these up in the past and seen some cool caterpillars. We've managed to raise them at the lab. So let's see if there is anything in here. We'd have to identify this later. I've long ago forgotten what on earth this creature actually is. Ooh. No way. Oh. What is it? So, guys, Ooh. this is really cool. <laughs> this is really weird. So this stem was hollowed out long ago by this caterpillar, but inside of it, it's now empty of the caterpillar, but we have eggs, we have springtails, and we have what look like either little fly or little beetle larva. Can you see any of that? What a perfect example of, of how everything in nature is used. You know, a caterpillar hollows out a stem and that's real estate. So everything else is going to move in. I'm getting these little springtails on my hands. Um, we've left the pine hill behind us where we found the pitch pine needle minor caterpillars. Um, and we're heading further down airport road into some wetland areas. And we're going to search for sedges um, that stayed green over the winter. Sort of a grass-like plant that stayed green under the snow to see if we can find um, this really cool little caterpillar that mines the sedge leaves. So we've got the crew here looking for sedge leaves with little brown spots or lines at the bases of them. Um, that's the sign of a little leaf mining caterpillar called Cosmopteryx. Uh, we'd love to bring some back to the lab and show you under the microscopes. You can actually watch them eating cells one at a time. All right, the hunt continues. So the sedges have thicker leaves than the grass nearby. It usually has a sort of um, crease down the middle. Later in the season when there's stems around, you'd be able to look at the edges of the stems. Sedges have edges, um, but this time of year, we're basing it more on the leaf. Sarah's got some. A bouquet, small bouquet. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the, the brown lines down here that look like, you know, maybe something got uh, damaged in the winter or too cold or actually, where the caterpillars are living and eating. So take no brown mark for granted out there. 
Time and time again, we realize that things that we just thought were dead were actually like the houses of little organisms. Oh, this one's got one. So you're looking up through the light here. Let's see if, ooh, that's perfect. We're in the field, we found sedges that had overwintered. We found the little brown marks, and now you can see there's a tiny little caterpillar inside that leaf. This is a leaf miner, so it's not on the leaf, it's not under the leaf, it's actually inside the leaf, between layers of cells, eating away. Sloan's run off into the, the swampy area here because he saw some bark on a dead tree. We've been finding a lot of American dagger cocoons under the bark like this. So maybe you'll come up with a few of those on our way to the dewberry area where we hope to find some more leaf miners. Oh no, actually I lied. <gasps> Wait, you, you've got some? I do, yes. Oh, neat. All right. Thank you. Just well, you can see everything. You can see where the egg would have hatched mm -hmm. over to the right there. This. Yeah. And then it fed along the edge of the leaf and yeah, there it is. Is that it? Is that that dark shadow? That's what I'm assuming. Yeah. Courtney's holding up one of these dewberry leaves to the sun so that maybe we can see the little creature inside that dark line there. Looks a lot like a caterpillar, but under close investigation, we realized these were soft fly larvae. So the larva of a little stingless wasp, which is spending the winter inside dewberry leaves. Even from here, you can see all those leaf mines here. Ooh, do you want to hide it behind You know what? Uh, we're, we're real here at the lab, yeah, right? Yeah, just this do is, it. This isn't Fine. the BBC hiding behind the scenes here. We're, yeah. we're going to just show it how it is. Yeah. So we... Uh, <laughs> We found three different species of leaf miners today, at least, in the three different habitats we looked in. We found a pine um, needle miner in the pine barren over there. Um, we found a sedge leaf miner in the wetlands, and we've just been finding a leaf mining saw fly in the dewberry all around us here. Um, I looked up all the scientific names so I could share them with you. Um, I'll try to pronounce them correctly, um, but we've got Exotelia pinif... <laughs> Pinifoliella. Exotelia pinifoliella um, is the pitch pine needle miner. Uh, Cosmopteryx, um, a species of cosmo Cosmopteryx yep. caterpillar in the sedge leaves. And Metallus ocreus is the um, saw fly that are in the dewberry leaves. <laughs> I think I should probably try that one more time. No, that was great. I got it really wrong. I look really embarrassed. No, it's awesome. It's perfect. That's how it is. Back to the lab with our collections. We've got our dewberry leaves, our sedges, um, some of our pine needles. So this is how we set up our finds, our leaf miners for the microscope. Um, we've got them in little plastic containers to keep the plant wet. Um, and they're going to be in these uh, eating away. And we'll shine a light through the back of them so we get a really good look. What do you think would be a good one to start with? Maybe the pine feeders, those are the hardest to see. The pine guys? Yeah, these are definitely the hardest to sort of understand. We were having trouble finding out whether we actually had any caterpillars here. Um, and I need to take a little piece of cardboard, and there we go. So, Ooh. We, oh, look at that. That's not hard to see at all. There you go. It's really cool. We found out that the, um, the sort of dead orange ends to the needles, that's where they overwintered and fed last fall, but they leave those and they enter the middle of the needles. And this one's just sort of re-entered the needle. It's been feeding in there, and now we're watching it, well, do all kinds of stuff, put down Turn silk. Around. This is definitely the best view we've ever had of these. Yeah. Clearly waiting a little while into the spring helps. Yeah. This is a caterpillar inside of the needle. This has been so powerful in our programs to have people realize how much can be going on in these tiny spaces. It really changes mm -hmm. your perspective. So the sedge caterpillars, the Cosmopteryx, were a great discovery for us this year. Um, we were really looking for a leaf miner that we could show the details of them living and feeding in the wintertime. And we had had the pine ones, we've had the um, saw flies in their uh, rubus and their dewberry leaves. But these guys are really easy to see, and you can see the plant structure, the cells, um, how they move around internally. The best part of these was that they, they don't poop in their mines. Every time they want to go to the bathroom, they back up to a little hole at the beginning of the mine and eject the frass pellet out. Uh, it seems like a lot of work to go to the bathroom. So we're going to put it under our microscope with the backlight here. You can see the leaf blade now under the scope. 
Ooh, this one's interesting. We're not going to see this move very much because it's pre-shed. You see how small the head looks, and then there's a bulge behind the head? That bulge is actually the new head developing. It'll shed the old head capsule away and then start feeding again. I hope we have an active one in here somewhere, though. Okay, we'll go one more here. Our last leaf. Big mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So here is the next instar from the one we were just looking at, inside the sedge leaf, feeding away. And if we go really close, maybe we can see the cell structure of the plant in relation to its head. This is going to be a great view, guys. So this is our Cosmopteryx. Um, I'll try and bring up a picture for you later to show you the adult. It's a really beautiful little moth. And it's not the kind of moth you're necessarily going to see under the, uh, the porch lights, anything like that. Um, I think one of the best ways to see these is camp out at the right time of year near a little sedge and, and watch to see if you can get them mating and laying eggs. It turns out we actually have two species um, in our sedge mines. This one here, I'm going to need to key out for the name, um, but this species leaves its frass in the mine. So you can see all the frass built up behind it. That feature alone separates it out from the other ones we've been looking at the uh, Cosmopteryx. So this will be a, a different species of moth um, living in the same exact uh, sedge plants, uh, both having overwintered outside. What are we doing? <laughs> Action. Action. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> we look at leaf miners all summer long under our microscopes at programs. We get to see them feeding, erupting with parasitoids or pupating. Um, sometimes we'll have the adult moths emerging. Um, in the winter, though, we kept up with our open hours and programs, and we thought we might not get to work with leaf miners anymore. Um, but we were forced to work with an evergreen plant here in New England. Um, it's called dewberry. We needed to collect these leaves to feed some other insects at the lab, which we'll introduce you to in a minute. Um, but these were coming into the lab, and we noticed that they had the brown splotches on them and decided to just take a closer look using the microscopes to see what was going on. So this was the first leaf miner that we found that we could use in wintertime to show off this amazing life history of caterpillars and other creatures, other larvae, living inside of leaves. This is a great view. So this is a creature inside of a dewberry leaf right now, in between the layers of cells, eating away. Get a closer look here. Beautiful. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> I wanted to introduce you to the reason why we have these leaves in the winter and why we first found these mines. Courtney has the creature that's been eating all the dewberry leaves. So she's um, Heteropteryx, yep. right? um, the jungle nymph, and not a native species here. She's native to Southeast Asia, Malaysia. Um, but uh, I sort of like the story that in trying to feed her in the wintertime, we learned a lot about our own local natural history, and it was really what got us looking for these wintertime mines in the first place. I rather like this. I've got this uh, wall of caterpillar trading cards behind me for this shot. Um, so uh, that brings our uh, leaf miner adventure to a close, our second video like this for everybody. I hope you've been enjoying them, learning something new. Uh, we'd like to keep this going, uh, but we could definitely use your feedback. So let us know what you think, and um, hopefully we'll bring you another adventure real soon. Take care.